and welcome to a sunny Snetterton for the third round of the Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup. Arriving here in the southeast, it is Stephen Daly who enjoys a three-point championship lead over Ian Jones, with Ben Huntley not far behind. David May and Mark Skeets, meanwhile, are debating the Masters Championship lead. But before we go racing today, let's take a look back at some of the highlights from the first two rounds. Whilst it may be Stephen Daly who enjoys the points lead arriving at Snetterton, it was Ian Jones who got out of the blocks quickest at the season opener. Whilst Alan Corfield, Ray McDowell and Lee Dendy Sadler were having their own problems at Paddock Hill Bend, Ian Jones was on his way to the victory in race one at Brands Hatch. Race two saw more drama for the midfield runners, all of which was safely negotiated by eventual winner Stephen Daly, the reigning champion taking his first chequered flag of the year. Race 3 saw a relatively uncontested victory go the way of Ian Jones, and with it the points lead, arriving at Alton Park. At the Cheshire Circuit, though, it was Ben Huntley who appeared to have found even more speed, taking his third podium finish of the year in Race 1, whilst Matt Flowers had a positive run end in the Cascades Gravel Trap. Jones was a three-time winner, whilst David May was back on the outright podium, again winning the Masters class. David briefly led race two before feisty Scotsman Daly fought him off into Cascades and took a lead that he would not relinquish to the chequered flag. May was second, whilst Keith Towers was on the podium. It all came to a head in race three though, where Ian Jones, in his determination to fend off Stephen Daly, skittered through the Cascades gravel trap and briefly dropped outside of the top 20. It was Ben Huntley who was able to take advantage though to take the race lead and then he got his elbows out to defend to the chequered flag and take his first win of 2019. So as the cars make their way onto the grid then let's take a look at how they'll line up. It's Ian Jones and Stephen Daly on the front row with Ben Huntley and Matt Parks on row two. Tom Griffiths and Wayne Flint are on the third row. Luke Browse and David Mayer on row four with Keith Towers and Mark Skeets sharing row five ahead of Paul Maguire and Reese Clayton with his best qualifying effort of the season. Matt Flowers and Oliver Fowler are next then Mikey Doble and Gordon McMillan with David Sharp and Tom Langford on the ninth row of the grid. Lead Andy Sadler and Will Davison round out the top 20. Then Tim Scott Andrews, Adam Reed. Craig Jameson and Aaron Morgan, 24th of 43, remarkably. The Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup very much headlining this BRSCC race meeting here at Snetterton, and with good reason. There are 43 cars about to head onto the circuit together. No split grid this weekend, so we could be in for three particularly busy races. So the five second ward is raised, then Keith Towers were on board with. It is Ian Jones and Stephen Daly who share the front row of the grid. Remember, Daly is three points clear of Jones in the championship battle. Ian really could do with beating him in this one. Away we go then, we're on board with the pole sitter. And already, look at that, Stephen Daly is nosing in front, but on the outside line towards Rich's corner. Stephen Daly will not want to take too many risks here, but if he can get around Ian Jones at the first turn, he will no doubt go for it. They run wheel to wheel through Rich's corner. The double apex right-hander off its fit, David May. So too, Reese Clay. Several others are off wide as well. I think Gordon McMillan was on the grass too. Perhaps unsurprisingly, with so many cars going through the first corner, there were one or two casualties. As at the hairpin, Ian Jones runs out wide. He takes Daly with him. And it looked to me as though that was Matthew Parks who went through into the race lead. Matt Parks, who got his first ever victory in the championship here 12 months ago in fairly fortuitous circumstances. But he had really good pace that weekend too. And he's delivering on that potential again here today by snatching the race lead away in the early stages. Jones is second. It's side by side for third then with Ben Huntley up the inside of Stephen Daly towards Agostini Ian Jones ducking and diving they all slow down for the hairpin and barreling around the outside of everyone he goes Tom Griffiths Tom Griffiths may have just got past Stephen Daly and possibly is now ahead of Ben Huntley as well onto the podium we'll have to pick that up in a moment or two two and three wide action a plenty further back as Tom Langford bangs wing mirrors with one of the dobles I think that was on the run out of the tight left hander most likely that was Mike Doble, who I think was the closest to him on the grid. They worked their way then up towards the right-hander at Oggies. The midfield battle is particularly frenetic here with such a busy pack of cars negotiating this tight and technical infield section for the first time of asking. Only a 15-minute race as well, so you've got to try and get on with this in the early stages, particularly those who are maybe making up for bad starts. All bit of congestion there in the midfield. That's number 77, Steve Chandler going slowly. He's got a problem, unfortunately, the yellow car. As for the race lead, it is Matt Parks defending busily from Ian Jones. Huntley is still third then, but Griffiths did go around the outside of Stephen Daly. So right now, if we threw the checkered flag, which thank goodness we're not going to do, there's still plenty more racing to be done. But if we were to throw the checkered flag now, it would be Ian Jones who would take back the championship lead fairly convincingly, actually, from Stephen Daly. We know that Stephen's a fighter, and he 
will no doubt try and work his way back onto the tail of the race leader before too much longer. There is Stephen, he's attacking for fourth place for the time being, as he tries to find a way past Tom Griffiths. Matt Parks then leading the way, and he's going to lead the first lap of this BMW Nankang Tires uh, Compact Cup race meeting. Keith Towers are on board with here then. Keith, who is one of the lead Masters contenders this season, really in that battle with Mark Skeets and David May for the title in the Masters ranks. But all of those drivers, at times, have been up there fighting for outright podiums. So too this man, Wayne Flint, in the number 55 car, who works his way through Ridges Corner, runs a bit wide. Wayne Flint, though, looking for his first ever podium, if he can get it. He's a little way away from the podium places for now. Back and forth with Keith Towers down towards the Wilson hairpin. Paul McGuire, that was, just in front, defending from Luke Browse. And that will still be the order that those two cars find themselves in. And they're right behind them, the red and white car of Keith Towers. Just casually adjust the rear view mirror on the run towards Palmer's as he tries to keep a grip of who's around him and what they're all trying to do. But as you can imagine, it's easier said than done to keep on top of everything that's going on around you with so many cars on the circuit at the same time. Lots of locking up as Keith Towers goes for third place there on the inside of Ben Huntley. Ian Jones had to go for the race lead and ended up losing momentum. So Huntley tries to go around the outside, gets elbowed onto the dirt. Wayne Flint is joining in as well. It's a six car battle for the race lead that makes its way towards Hamilton for the second time. And they are so close together that you have to wonder how much longer they can keep this up without some contact being made. Usually the driving standards are really very clean and respectful at the front end of these BMW Compact Cup races, but as you can see with this ultra close competition we're enjoying this year more than ever arguably, maybe a little bit of uh, paint may be traded on occasion. Stephen Taylor there trying to get a run on Tom Griffiths because he has got this pressure from Wayne Flint behind. Board again here with Keith Towers running down the Bentley straight, that is, I think, still ex caterer racer Luke Browse in front of him. Luke is receiving tuition this year from TCR UK runner up last year, uh, Ollie Taylor. Bad drive to have in your camp. And Ollie, clearly, his guidance is working because Luke is having a really strong showing this weekend inside the top 10 here. And, uh, looking for, I believe, yeah, his first top 10 finish of the season. It was 11th in race one of Alton Park. That was his best result of the season so far. And of course, they're all benefiting from the battling that's going on ahead of them, keeping this whole pack nicely bunched together. The top two may be starting to escape slightly now from Huntley third, Griffiths fourth, and Daly fifth with Wayne Flint, then Mark Skeets, then Wire, then Browse, then Towers, then everybody else in one long queue as they come through to the completion now of the second lap of the race. On board once again with Tom Langford here, who has a bit of clean air in front of him by this race's standards. That's got to be one, Ooh, at least six or seven car lengths to the next pack of cars in front. Fairly certain he doesn't have a five or six car length advantage over the pack behind him, though. Tom hugging the white line down the right-hand side of the pit lane there to try and uh, defend towards Rich's corner, where, on the exit of Rich's corner, Stephen Daly is attacking for fourth place. He's cleanly up the inside of Tom Griffiths and makes it look easy. So Stephen Daly picks up another place. With it, another couple of championship points will go his way. In this relatively early stage of the championship, it is still well worth keeping track of these championship points because it is so tight at the top. Just eight points covering the top three. And Huntley and Ian Jones, though, right now, looking set to take some points out of Daly, potentially. Stephen Daly is coming his knees into fourth place now and looks ominous in the white and black car there, fourth in line. Looks to the inside of Ben Huntley there, who has a big look to the inside of Ian Jones, who I think was trying to get a better exit from Agostini than the race leader, Matt Parks. There is Paul McGuire, the black car, just behind the yellow car of Mark Skeets. Masters contenders in this race then because David May has had a slightly, by his recently high standards, slightly lacklustre weekend so far. David only qualified down the order slightly uh, outside of the top 10, wasn't he? So he's got some work to do to try and get himself back into contention. Excuse me, he was eighth on the grid, was David May. But having not finished worse than fourth all year this year outright, uh, let alone within the Masters contention, there he is, the BMW Works liveries car, and it's not really helping himself there with that grass tracking line out of um, Williams. So he will fall ever further back now from the cars in front, right at the front of the pack, though. It's almost side by side for the race lead, as again, Matt Parks just has to defend the inside through Brundle. Be careful, though, because you can go around the outside of Brundle to have the inside line for that right-hander at Nelson, but it can sometimes get a bit congested when you try that. But it is a legitimate overtaking opportunity here on the Snetterton circuit. Through the bomb hole towards core and corner again and this little pack being led by Mark Skeet but Paul McGuire former Mazda MX-5 racer and front runner indeed in Mazda MX-5 racing 
is starting now to look a little racy. He's sideways through corner, very easily done though, because you're braking and turning at the same time. And then you have to fling the car the opposite direction through the left-hander at Murray's. Very, very tricky part of the circuit there to end the third lap of the race. Wayne Flint then across the start-finish line. He's trying to close in on the group in front. Again, it's almost side-by-side side for the race leaders. Ian Jones goes to the outside into Riches. Now, he's not trying to go right round the outside there. He's instead trying to concentrate on exit speed to get on the inside towards Wilson. As you can see off in the distance, Matt Parks is wise to it. Moves over to the inside to defend. And this is what stacks the whole pack up. And someone will be brave enough to go to the outside. And on this occasion, perhaps unsurprisingly, it's Stephen Daly that tries that. And he's trying to take third place away from one of his big championship rivals, Ben Huntley. That's Keith Towers on the grass with Gordon McMillan on the inside. But the race leaders are starting to jockey for position again. And Stephen Daly actually has not got past Ben Hudley, but instead has Tom Griffiths trying to go round the outside of him. This might not work out, though, for Tom, unfortunately, because he's going to be on the outside line for at least the next two corners as well. Stephen Daly will go back up the inside for fourth. And Wayne Flint might even be able to follow him through here. Wayne's looking to the inside. What about the exit speed for Griffiths on the dirty side of the road? He struggles for traction. Wayne Flint tries to stay alongside towards Hamilton, but he can't quite do it. And so Griffiths hangs on. But Stephen Daly there, far from gaining ground, very nearly ended up losing a couple of positions there. And that goes to show just how crucial the, uh, the these moves are. You have to execute them right. If you go for a move that doesn't work, then it can end up costing you several positions because there are always at least two or three other cars right on your rear bumper waiting to attack. Sometimes it's an advantage, actually, to be the Wayne Flint of the group, the man at the back of the queue, because at least you're not under any pressure from the uh, cars immediately behind you cars that are next behind Wayne Flint. You just caught a glimpse off there. Still, Mark Skeets ahead of Paul McGuire. Again, for the race lead, Ian Jones looks to the outside here, Matt Parks, and he's trying this outside move. Is he through Brundle and Nelson? Yes, he's got the inside line. Oh, there's contact between the two of them. Parks is off sideways, and Ian Jones goes through into the race lead. He's slow off the corner, though, and Ben Huntley with two wheels on the grass goes through. There's more contact into the bomb hole, and somehow, Huntley hangs on and takes over the race lead. There's damage to the front of Ian Jones' car. There's damage to the back of his car as well, and Stephen Davis I think somehow out of all of that has come through in second position. Yes, he has with Tom Griffiths third and Ian Jones surely destined for the pit lane. There are bits falling off the number 59 BMW as it comes through Murray's corner. And now Matt Parks is right back on his tail. Ian Jones, does he call it a day? No, he stays on circuit, which means that he and Matt Parks will temporarily at least resume their battle. But I think Jones has now pulled out of line. Has he to the left-hand side of the road? Is he slowing? It looks like it. Wayne Flint can't really see where he's going in the smoke. Well, that was a dramatic sequence of events there. We suggested a lap ago that Jones might try that move. Here's a replay. Look, goes around the outside at Brundle to try and get the inside at Nelson, but he's not fully alongside. Parks turns in. There's contact between the two of them. Matt exits stage right, and out of nowhere comes Ben Huntley, who tries to close the door through the bomb hole and very nearly got himself turned across the nose of Ian Jones, the erstwhile race leader. But it was Huntley that came out of it all with the lead of the race now, with Stephen Daly second, and I think Tom Griffiths in third position. Yes, he is. Matt Parks fourth, and then this man, Wayne Flint, is fifth, and Ian Jones is now pulling off, and that is a non-finish that he could ill afford. He was already trailing Stephen Daly by three points in the championship race, and this retirement will not do him any good at all. It will no doubt become one of his dropped scores, but that is essentially two races in a row now that we've seen Ian Jones arguably making mistakes, really. He had that awful lap one at Alton Park, which dropped him way down the order. He was very lucky, actually, to recover to a sixth position, put in a good recovery drive, but then you could argue he's never really been in that position in the first place. And now in this race, you have to sort of say that was unnecessary contact there. And Matt Parks will no doubt agree with me because he's been nerfed off the track down to fourth position. There he is, the man who had led every lap of this race up until that point is now off the podium places altogether. On board with Wayne Flint, who's just behind him in fifth position, who is maybe a little bit closer to that group now than he was. We still have a fight for the race lead because it's out of all of it, Ben Huntley that's ended up out in front with Stephen Daly behind. Now, these two had a sensational battle in that third and final race at Alton Park a few weeks ago, a race that Ben won his first victory of the season, but far from his first podium appearance. In fact, Ben has not been off the podium yet this season. A win, two seconds, and a third place mean that he is now, arguably, with Ian Jones's demise, emerging as Stephen Daly's nearest rival in the championship. If he can hang on to this race victory, he certainly will be his nearest rival in the championship. And Ben, who's been threatening this for a year or so now, ever since he took his first victory last season. And he has 
wins, oh, excuse me, his first victory, of course, was Alton Park, wasn't it, a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago. You forget, actually, that he hadn't won a race. He's had a few podiums before this season, but this year really has emerged as a strong championship contender. He's going to have to prove his championship credentials now, though, if he's going to keep Stephen Daly and, indeed, Tom Griffiths and Matt Parks and arguably Wayne Flint behind him because they're all starting to gang up on him again. This uh, Snetterton 300 circuit with its long straights allows lots of slipstreaming and with its big braking zones allows lots of outbreaking manoeuvres to be attempted as well. Tom Griffiths attempted one but actually it's Daly that goes through. Oh there's contact. They're both off the road. Stephen Daly and Ben Huntley. I don't believe it. They've both gone off. There's more contact there between Matt Parks and Steve Daly as they go through Palmer's. And I think that Tom Griffiths has just managed to wrestle the race lead away from them. Yes, he has. So down towards Agostini and another lead change. Griffiths is out in front. Daly is second. And Ben Huntley could be off the podium because Matt Parks is fighting back around the outside. And Wayne Flint still won't go away either. He's in fifth place. He runs a bit wide, though, so won't gain any positions just yet. More drama in what has been a drama-filled opening race of the weekend here at Snetterton. The BMW Compact Cup living up to its headline bill here this weekend. And uh, they are thoroughly entertaining the spectators' trackside, but I don't think that Ben Huntley will be particularly entertained by what just happened because contact between he and Stephen Daly means that both of them have now dropped down. Well, Daly is still second, I suppose, but certainly Huntley has cost him three positions. He's now in exactly the same position that uh, Matt Parks found himself in a lap or so ago after his um, duel with Ian Jones ended in contact. Wayne Flint still fifth as well, just not for the want of trying though, on two or three occasions now it looked like his luck might have been in and he might have been about to jump into a podium position. And it's Griffiths that leads then, Daly now runs wide and he's on the grass and this could be maybe Matt Parks' chance to get back up the inside. Yes, he's up the inside towards the bomb hole and Huntley action replay from a couple of laps ago goes around the outside, two wheels on the grass and turns into the bomb hole one place higher than he was. This time it's third position with Matt Parks into second, so more changes here that he can keep up with almost. Paul Maguire says, this looks like fun, I want to join in. He's closing in too and it will very shortly be five cars for second place, but it is only for second place because Tom Griffiths is taking full advantage of this look to pull away at the front of the field. Parks, Huntley, Daly, Skeets and Maguire look set to debate the lower positions on the podium, but Matt Parks is in the pit lane! Matt Parks, what a promising, uh, well, what a disappointing end to what was looking like a really promising race. Matt Parks is in the pits, potentially damaged from one of the bits of contact he's had in this race. Either way, he will not be on the podium. He will not score any points at all. So, on to the final lap. Someone hide the chequered flag. This has been an absolutely sensational race, and it is not over yet because Stephen Daly is back up the inside for second place now. He's trying to outbreak Ben Huntley into the hairpin. He goes through. He runs a bit wide, though, and look at that. Wayne Flint goes up the inside as well. Wayne Flint, who has never had a podium in the BMW Compact Cup, is into third position. Sensational, opportunistic driving there and Wayne Flint who's been stuck sort of watching from the outside in in fifth position just wanting to be a part of this battle all race long has finally been able to take advantage of the shuffling in front of him to get into third position so Griffiths leads daily second and now Wayne Flint in third place once more look he's attacking the reigning champion no less for the second place but he needs to be careful because Ben Huntley's back on the inside bang bang they rub they touch on the exit of the corner and look at Wayne Flint there as he fights the steering wheel trying to keep control of the car He's side by side here into Hamilton. He's on the outside line. He turns in though and holds on to third position. So Ben Huntley, despite the argy bargy on the exit of Agostini, was not able to lever his way through. And Wayne Flint hangs on to this third position. Will he choose now to settle for third or does he still think he's got something for Stephen Daly? I reckon though the rest of this final lap of the race might actually turn into a defensive drive for Flint rather than an attacking one because Ben Huntley's had a much better exit from Williams. Goes to the left of the road down the uh, Bentley straight then probably goes to the right hand side again. We can't see him because we're on board with Wayne Flint but Wayne is driving down the middle of the road. That's the defensive line. Huntley can't get alongside though and instead has to watch his mirrors because Paul Maguire is joining in as well. Sensational racing here from the BMW. W Compact Cup, it has been one of the most entertaining, that's the word I'll go with, races that we've seen for a long time in this championship, and it looks as though Tom Griffiths is going to come out on top for only his second ever win. Remember, he took his first win in a near photo finish at Thruxton last year with Stephen Daly. This one is not quite as close at the flag, but it was equally dramatic the way in which he got the race lead, and Tom Griffiths exits the final corner, and car number 16 will become a two-time winner in the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. Second place is going to be Stephen Daly for third 
third place. It looks like it might be side by side, but the chequered flag goes to Tom Griffiths. A fantastic drive to win by 1.7 seconds in the end over Stephen Daly in second. And Wayne Flint hangs on for his first ever podium finish. A brilliant drive there for all concerned. Ben Huntley is fourth. He'll be disappointed with that. I think Paul McGuire, though, gets his first ever top five. Mark Skeets is next. Luke Browse is seventh. Ahead of Keith Towers, Gordon McMillan and David May, disappointingly down in tenth position. Michael D Mikey Doble is 11th, Matt Flowers 12th, Adam Reed 13th, then Craig Jameson and Tom Langford, ahead of David Sharp, Oliver Fowler, Aaron Morgan, and the rest. Remarkably, despite the high action in that race, we only actually lost four cars. Uh, we saw Simon Welch retire on the first lap, Stephen Chandler also retired early on, Ian Jones and Matt Parks both retired after their contact. Whether or not that was the reason specifically for Parks' DNF, I'm not sure, but we can almost certainly say that's why Ian Jones failed to finish. OK, Tom, congratulations. First win of the year. You must be very happy with that. Over the moon with that. It was a, it was a hectic, chaotic race, but kept our nose clean and, and kept right in there. OK, and that means you start from pole for the next round. Um, you can look into uh, take another win. Hopefully, hopefully we can get away well at the start and, and keep in front of everybody. Brilliant. All right, good luck with that one. Lovely. Thank you. All right, Stephen, uh, second place today. Uh, how did that go for you? Uh, it wasn't bad. Um, we're quite happy with the result. It, obviously, it's a close championship, so we've just—it's just about accumulating points, you know. There's no, when you don't need to go for the wins, there's no point, you know. It's just about keeping up there in second, third place, and just just trying to manage the championship that way, uh, which we're doing uh, up to now, anyway. Um, so we're quite happy with second. Uh, big thanks to the Casey Motorsport guys. It's been awesome um, having them on board again this year, and they're providing me a good car as as they always do. And with Tom Griffiths winning, you got a few more rivals for the championship this year. Tom's naturally fast, his dad puts a hell of a lot of time in the car um, and you know it's, it shows out there, it, 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 it really does show how the experience be, uh, Tom's got out there is just, just unreal and he's, he, he drives like a champion as well. And you start side by side for the next round so good luck with that one. Yeah thank you very much.